All right. Well, I finally watched Pablo Lorraine's El Conde. Um, after what many months it has been released, been released in September, so it's been what, two months it has been released. I finally had a chance to watch it last night, and it was not good. It was not a good movie. Um, this is such a half-baked satire. It's 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 kind of funny just how it presents a lot of interesting ideas, and it you know wants to scathingly uh, indict uh, Augusto Pinochet in ways that he wasn't publicly indicted, right, uh, positing him at a vamp- as, as a 250-year-old vampire with a thirst for dying, you know? Vampires usually thrive in immortality, but now he just wants to croak. And so that's essentially the, the sort of, I guess, the um, crux of the movie. But it's, it's really not that interesting because Pablo Lorraine, the, the main problem with this movie is that Pablo Lorraine just scatters the plot with um, unnecessary subplots, right? At some point, well, there is an English woman that narrates the movie and you're wondering like, oh, who, who can that person be? Well, at some point during the film, it is revealed that it's none other than Margaret Thatcher, who is also a vampire. And so basically the message of this movie is that all politicians and dictators are vampires, which you don't need a movie to tell you, to tell you that. All politicians and dictators are absolutely vampires, right? They're all terrible people who thrive for power and uh, immortality and want to be in their throne, the throne of political power. They want to be in their throne forever. So it's not like, it's not that deep of a satire, and it's not that deep of a movie because this is shit that people should usually know. Don't trust politicians and definitely don't trust and don't put your faith in a fucking dictator because this film was released... By the way, I mean, this whole thing was was, was coordinated because this thing was released uh, on the day, or on the 50th anniversary of the coup d'etat. If you didn't know, uh, Augusto Pinochet seized power through a coup d'etat. He's a dictator, right? Uh, he's the longest-serving president of Chile. No, he's a fucking dictator, okay? He literally rose to power by overthrowing uh, the established government. And, uh, and so in, in the movie, they, uh, they talk about that, but uh, not in a very sort of, I guess, uh, uh, in a very sort of deeper level. It's, 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 it's always a film that presents, you know, it presents its themes, it presents its characters, it presents, it presents its, its aesthetic underpinnings as well, and its sort of um, uh, uh, subtext, it presents them very clearly, but uh, it never necessarily explores any of those subtexts because it's too busy, again, putting Pinochet in a series of unnecessary subplots. There's a subplot about whether or not Pinochet the vampire flies at night like Batman uh, and kills a bunch of people to feed on their hearts. Turns out it's not him, uh, but, even, but, but even then, the subplot itself is as boring as it comes. There's an, then there's another subplot in which Pinochet's um, family hires a nun uh, to essentially divvy up his assets because he wants to die and exercise the demon out of him that's preventing him to die. That whole subplot is just horribly stitched together. The acting's very good. Uh, the acting all around, um, I forget the guy who plays Pinochet. I've, I've got the name right there. I just don't want to miss. I just, I just don't want to mispronounce the name. Oh me, holy fucking shit! Uh, Jaime Vadel, who plays Pinochet, is excellent. He's very good in this movie. Uh, he's got this. I guess. I mean, of course, this is satire. So he plays Pinochet with a sort of self-deprecating glare that even Pinochet himself wouldn't even posit himself as. Uh, and so it's you know the portrayal of the character is 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 is, is always very sharp and very incisive no pun intended, Uh, and the actor who plays him is great. Uh, But that whole subplot with the nun exercising the demons out of him, and then, you know, he wants to die. The whole fucking thing is about him wanting to die. When the nun comes into their house, he's like, you know what, maybe I don't want to die anymore because, you know, he starts to fall in love with her because his wife is actually in love with the butler who's also a vampire, who's actually the guy that's out in the streets, you know, like Batman flying killing people, uh, and, like, everything is presented, every single plot thread in this film is presented as an important plot thread 
but then they're deemed unimportant. It's as if Lorraine doesn't really know what he wants to say. He presents a lot of big, bold ideas. Certainly the cinematography by Edward Lachman, one of the best cinematographers working today, is the best part of this movie. This film looks incredible. Um, honestly, the black and white photography is uh, at times very visually arresting, and the shots of Pinochet or the butler, or basically anybody flying, um, are extremely lyrical in their simplicity and their sort of catharsis. When you see this sort of a, a ecstatic glee, one of the characters gets turned into a vampire in the movie, and then they they, they fly for the first time, and there's this the there, there's this sort of shot that is highly reminiscent of, of, of the Passion of Joan of Arc, but also in their facial expressions, it it, it it feeds in in its lyrical beauty. It is one of the most really one of the most beautiful movies I've seen all year, and perhaps you know I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if it's a major contender when it comes to cinematography at this year's uh, Academy Awards because it looks fucking immaculate. And what a shame this movie only had a limited theatrical release because those images really deserve to be seen on the grandest of screens. And uh, again, I was so taken aback by how potent and powerful the images were that I was always invested into the movie, even if I thought the plot itself didn't make a fucking lick of sense. You know, a lot of things were introduced, a lot of, 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 of potent elements were introduced, a lot of interesting elements were introduced, the acting was very good, but the film as a whole was not. It was not a very good movie. It has nothing of value to say. It has no, I wouldn't say of value, I would just say it has nothing of interest to say. Once its core message gets sort of, I guess, put out into the ether, it doesn't really have anything interesting to say, and it was kind of boring. So, uh, there you go. I really don't have a lot to say about this movie. I tried to sort of dump all of my thoughts there. These are my thoughts on Pablo Lorraine's El Conde. Uh, if you like this video and you've enjoyed my review, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. I'm a couple of subscribers away from the coveted 100, and follow me on social media uh, at Max from Quebec. Thank you very much for your support.